A very good morning, colleagues and friends. I'd like to welcome you to the second and final day of the 2022 GPF. We ask that we take our seats, please, ladies and gentlemen. We're waiting on a few more delegates to, um, well, finalists as well for our award ceremony before we uh, commence with our ceremony proper our formalities and the awards presentation, which is what I'm sure we're all looking forward to this morning. For those of you who are here early, we'd like to thank you sincerely for your cooperation and uh, for assisting us this morning uh, to try our best to, of course, start our program as per schedule. Uh, we'd love to do that, but we appreciate your understanding, ladies and gentlemen, as we look across the room. We still need a few more of our guests, especially for those who um, will be recognized this morning in terms of finalists and winners. So uh, we ask for your, your, your patience at this time. While we do that, a few uh, brief housekeeping matters we wish to outline. And I thank you sincerely for your attention. Those who've just walked in, a very good morning, and thank you so much for joining us. Those joining us on our social media platforms as well, um, we thank you. Thank you for, for being here to be part of our uh, celebrations and our ceremonies. A kind request that uh, at this time we please just check our uh, mobile devices and ensure that you've activated silent or vibrate mode at this time. Again, we ask that you check your mobile devices, ensure to activate a silent or vibrate mode at this time. To avoid any distractions during the presentation, ladies and gentlemen. Colleagues, we also kindly request to ensure our program runs as per schedule. After our awards presentation, we will take a... Um, refreshment break and we hope that you will return five minutes prior so we can get started with the next um, of our um, as per the schedule and uh, the same after lunch is that so that we can finish um, on time today during our breaks we encourage you all to visit the uh, CBJ Afi Bazaar and uh, also, um, if you haven't yet, I do hope you have, but if you haven't yet, please ensure to download the event app so that uh, you can give us your feedback and we can conduct our evaluation as well. Also, a kind, a kind request, ladies and gentlemen, from our um, logistics team, a kind request for those of you um, who will be departing either today or tomorrow, or whenever you are to return, we wish to advise you to please, you need to depart for the airport three hours prior to your flight. If there are changes to the flight, we invite you to visit our team at the registration booth upstairs, just so that we can help you with regards to those, um, your itinerary and other changes. Okay, but if you're leaving, uh, and that's already confirmed, three hours prior is what we're asking um, everyone, just to give you enough time to get to the airport and to check in for your flight. Again, we thank you sincerely for, for being here this, this morning. Um, we have a huge celebration, of course, the awards proper, which we're doing for the first time here as part of our uh, program, our day program. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you've had to do a lot of applauding yesterday, we hope you'll do the same today as well because we're going to be announcing a few winners. So thank you. Thank you again so much for helping me with that. <laughs> All right, we're um, done with the housekeeping again. Please check your mobile devices and we'll just give a few more minutes for those who are yet to, who are making their way here to the ballroom and then we'll get started. Thank you for your attention.
Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to the AFI Awards 2022. Thank you. I'm Michelle Tevita Singh and I'll be your host for this morning's ceremony. First of all, let me just say how wonderful it is to be able to host this event live with everyone present in one room. After the last two challenging years of COVID, this event today feels particularly special. The fact that we can now be all together to celebrate and honor the wonderful achievements of our network's most outstanding individuals and institutions is a wonderful thing. This is especially so for an organization that places a premium on member engagement at all levels. We're all familiar with the unprecedented challenges of the last few years as a result of COVID. Despite this, the AFI network has found ways to remain unified and strong. We are the world's only peer-to-peer -peer network of financial inclusion policymakers and regulators. If anything, the last few years have shown that even a global pandemic affecting all aspects of life must not and cannot dull our sense of purpose. The significance of remaining connected cannot be overstated. Through various channels like working groups, peer reviews, trainings, AFI's data portal, online knowledge exchange, and social media platforms, we have found ways to continue our work together, share what we have learned, and push financial inclusion to the top of the global development agenda. More than ever, we remain committed to closing the gaps and continue the building of equal, financial, inclusive societies. This year, we have two new awards honoring initiatives aimed at youth, a group all too often left out of financial inclusion, and technology, a potent tool that can further AFI member aims in a multitude of ways. And coming together this year in person is a powerful physical reminder of the collaborative, innovative spirit that drives AFI. To mark this fresh and hopeful jumpstart, we are doing things a little differently this year. Unlike with previous AFI awards, we're now holding this award ceremony separately from the dinner, as you can see. The reason for this is that we felt that the importance of the awards should be reflected in a proper standalone event so that we can truly honor the outstanding nominees and awardees. This year, we're also adding two more prizes, which I mentioned earlier. The Global Youth Financial Inclusion Award. This is a new high-level AFI award that seeks to acknowledge and recognize financial policy makers and regulators across the globe that are undertaking impactful initiatives, policies, or regulations to accelerate financial inclusion of youth. The Nesta Espinilla Junior Financial Inclusion Innovation Award. This is also a new high-level AFI award and it seeks to honor the memory and immense legacy of Governor Nesta Espinilla, Jr. Governor Espinilla was a founding member of AFI and a tireless global champion of innovation and inclusion. This prestigious award aims to recognize AFI members that demonstrate outstanding commitment towards innovation and the use of technology to advance financial inclusion. Ladies and gentlemen, we are all excited about every finalist and award featured today. We all know that financial inclusion can be a challenging agenda to pursue. So I hope, while the video plays, you will join me in taking a moment to appreciate everyone in this room on the same journey as we are.
And now, it is my great pleasure to invite Dr. Alfred Hennig, the Executive Director of AFI, to make his opening remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Hennig. Sabah al khair to all. Yeah, welcome uh, to this <coughs> very important session. Excuse me. <coughs> Dear leaders, dignitaries, participants, uh, and most of all, all the members who have been nominated for these awards. And um, it's really my pleasure to welcome you to this session. I think you have uh, already received uh, some remarks on the rationale um, of these awards. We have been doing them for quite some time, but we have actually been doing them in a quite light way, as you remember, because we had uh, awards before that were actually given to our members, and the aggregation was just done based on, namely the, the really, you know, the almost um, individual recognition of members for what they have been doing in the AFI network based on data that we have. But then, and here you see the overview, we actually um, included two more awards. The second one here is the, is the Global Youth Financial Inclusion Award. Well, this is not um, AFI's idea. It is an award that has been formally given um, by the Child and Youth Finance International. It's a um, in, um, Netherlands-based NGO um, that um, I think stopped operating late 2019, and uh, AFI inherited uh, the award from this institution. Maybe you remember they also um, have the, uh, the Money Week that many of you know, and that one went to OECD. <coughs> this award went to AFI. So we are continuing um, this tradition. And this award is, of course, a special one. It is open to members as well as to financial sector regulators and policy makers who are not members. So this is what we inherited actually from the Child and Youth Finance International. Um, so also regulators who are not members of the AFI network can participate in this award. And it is really in order to recognize the, Im the importance that I have mentioned also yesterday on youth financial inclusion. So it's a recognition. But then there is a third award, and this is the Nestor Espinilla Junior Financial Inclusion Innovation Award. I'm very proud to announce the launch of this award that we are able to give to you with the support of Flourish, our partner in this. Well, and um, why do we do this? I mean, Nestor Espinilla, the late governor of the Central Bank of the Philippines, has been a great friend of AFI, um, a founding member. And um, there's more to say about him. You also will, will see something more later. But um, one of the very few regulators I have met who combined in an incredible way technical depth, a warm personality, diplomacy, diligence in one person. Actually, a person who I think I always enjoy to be in the room with, someone who did also not shy back from speaking up and making his point, especially when we were sometimes arguing with standard-setting bodies. Um, but at the same time, all the messages he got across, he did it in the most smooth way you can think of. But the message was always clear. And we want to give this award to a member and to those members who actually follow up on this legacy. Regulators who think out of the box and who are able to actually break down barriers while at the same time 
not losing sight of the necessity to keep the risks in check in order to make financial stability and financial inclusion actually a reality. Now, let me just say that um, we are extremely happy that for this award, we could also invite and have the presence of Madame Maria Teresita Espinilla in the room, who is here to celebrate with us. Thank you very much. Now, the process. Uh, we, um, as I said, for the Peer Leadership Awards, the first category, um, we, we have counted, we have gone back to our database, um, and that was done by the ATI Management Unit. For the other two awards, of course, we had to step up and we learned from other institutions. Um, I participated in the uh, European Microfinance Award, um, and I think they have um, a great process going on, so we looked at the process and we, we tried um, uh, also to live up to this standard, and um, we actually um, formed a jury uh, for the two awards, and here you see the jury members. So these are five jury members who have actually evaluated very systematically um, the submissions that we received. We got actually uh, many entries. For the Nestor Espinilla Award category, we received 12. And for the Youth Financial Inclusion Award, we received 10. And today, uh, we will see who are the finalists and who actually will carry home the award. The preliminary review of both of the rewards was actually done by the RT Management Unit uh, to identify the five finalists um, in both categories according to the criteria that had been shared before. Now, more details on the process are available in the RT Awards brochure, available in the GPF app. Okay. Let me thank the jury members um, who generously contributed their time. Um, I think all of us felt there's more work than we thought. So next time, um, I will think about it <laughs> because it, it, uh, it, um, it kept me really busy to do a diligent uh, evaluation. But I think um, my other jury members, Laura Foschi, executive director from ADA Microfinance, Georgette Jean-Louis, the former director, general and board member of the Central Bank of the Republic of Haiti, Jason Lamp, the deputy director at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation um, for Global Growth and Opportunity, and Daniel Skidlowski, our former chair of the AFI Steering Committee and formerly the superintendent of banking insurance and private pension fund in Peru, joined me in forming this jury. So thank you very much for this enormous input that you gave us. Well, um, let me thank uh, finally the, uh, the applicants. I've seen all the submissions and you will be surprised. It's not only that you learn a lot, it's incredible how much effort our members have put into these awards. Um, I can only share with you uh, these emotions about uh, enormous effort that, that really went into this. That's, so that's, that's really great. Thank you so much for this. I wish everyone best of luck um, for all the finalists. By being here amongst uh, this group today, you have already demonstrated strong commitment and contribution to our shared goals. And I hope the success of today's finalists and winners inspires also others in the AFI family to follow suit and to submit for these awards next year at the GPF in the country where we will be going to. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hannig, for that uh, insightful and inspiring overview. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's now 
time to acknowledge and celebrate the individuals and AFI member institutions whose work and dedication have yielded impressive results for financial inclusion. The first round of awards. Ladies and gentlemen, the first round of awards, the Technical Leadership Awards. This award is given to individual staff of AFI member institutions who have demonstrated leadership in the network, contributing high quality technical inputs towards global, regional, and working group outputs, including knowledge products, peer reviews, and AFI events and trainings. To present the first award for the entire category, that includes the six regions, we would now like to invite the esteemed Simeon Malachi Api, the Governor of the Reserve Bank of Vanuatu. Thank you so much, uh, Governor Ati. We also request all the finalists and winners of each category um, presentation to please stay on the stage to take a photograph with the governor before leaving the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, we kick off the Technical Leadership Awards. We'll be presenting the final award to the finalists from the Arab region. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the finalists. Congratulations, Fadwa Jowali of the Bank of Maghrib, Ola Khalil of Central Bank of Jordan, and Samir Afani of Palestine Monetary Authority. Congratulations to the finalists. And the winner of the Technical Leadership Award for the Arab region is... Congratulations, Samir Saleh Ahmad Afani, Palestine Monetary Authority. Congratulations to the finalists and the winner of the Technical Leadership Awards for the Arab region. Our next award under the same category is for the Asia region. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the finalists. Ellen Joyce, Suficiencia of the Banco Central Nang Filipina, Som Kosom of the National Bank of Cambodia, Rochelle de Castro Tomas of the Banco Central Nang Pilipina. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the Technical Leadership Award for the Asia region is Som Kosom, National Bank of Cambodia. Congratulations to the finalists and the winner of the Technical Leadership Awards for the Asia region. 
Our third award under the same category is for the Eastern Europe and Central Asia region. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the finalists. Angvatar Voshilov of the Financial Regulatory Commission, Mongolia. Ar Aminhui Mekrashyan of the Central Bank of Armenia and Jamshid Uzmanov of the Central Bank of Uzbekistan. And now I'm pleased to announce that the winner of the Technical Leadership Award for Eastern Europe and Central Asia is Ekbatar Voshilov, Financial Regulatory Commission of Mongolia. Congratulations to the finalists and the winner of the Technical Leadership Awards for the Eastern Europe and Central Asia region. Congratulations. Our fourth award under the same category is for the Latin America and the Caribbean region. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the finalists. Vanessa Sorto, Banco Cent Central de Reserva de El Salvador, Ligia Marcela Herrera, Jason Barantes Rojas. Let's give our finalists a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Ligia of the Comisia Nacional de Banco es Seguras de Honduras, excuse me. Congratulations to the finalists. And now I'm pleased to announce that the winner of the Technical Leadership Award for Latin America and the Caribbean region is, congratulations, Lydia Marcela Herrera, Comisión Nacional de Banco y Segures de Honduras. Let us congratulate again the finalists and the winner of the Technical Leadership Awards for the Latin America and the Caribbean region. Ladies and gentlemen, just two more winners remain in this category, and I'm delighted to announce that the finalists of the Technical Leadership Award for the Pacific are Wati Sito, Reserve Bank of Fiji, Linda Folia of the Central Bank of Solomon Islands, and Sakyu Sanombo of the Reserve Bank of Fiji. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the Technical Leadership Award for the Pacific Region is Linda Folia of the Central Bank of Solomon Islands. Congratulations to the finalists and the winner of the Technical Leadership Awards for the Pacific Region. And finally, the Technical Leadership Award for Sub-Saharan Africa Region. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the finalists. Emma Hayombo of Bank of uh, Namibia, Stephen Matthew Mbore of uh, Central Bank of Nigeria, and Madalisto Chamba of Reserve Bank of Malawi. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to announce that the winner of the Technical Leadership Award for the Sub-Saharan Africa region is Emma Hayambo, Bank of Namibia.
Ladies and gentlemen, let's congratulate again the finalists and the winner of the Technical Leadership Awards for the Sub-Saharan Africa region. We congratulate all the winners in this category and we thank the Governor Ati for presenting the awards. Thank you so much, Governor. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to present the Institutional Leadership Award. This award is given to the member institution that has most encapsulated the AFI DNA through its leadership role, active engagement and commitment in the AFI network during the past year. All finalists in this category have contributed to the network's collective body of knowledge through their actions and attitudes. They are proactive, highly engaged, welcoming peer learning and collaboration, allowing all of us to craft better policies and build a stronger, more united global policy alliance. To give out this award, Afi is privileged to have Douglas Rodriguez, president of the Banco Central de Reserva de El Salvador, to join us on stage to do the honors. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the finalists for the AFI Institutional Leadership Award. Superintendencia General de Entidades Financieras de Costa Rica, Central Bank of Egypt, Bank of Ghana, Banco Central Nang Pilipinas. Bank of Zambia. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the Institutional Leadership Award is Banco Central Nang Pilipinas. Let's congratulate the winner and the finalists for the Institutional Leadership Award. A big thank you and congratulations. And we also thank President Douglas Rodriguez for doing the honors of presenting this award. Thank you so much. Sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we move on to our next category to present this morning. The Maya Declaration Commitments Award. The Maya Declaration was a definitive moment in AFI's history. Launched at the 2011 Global Policy Forum in Riviera Maya, Mexico, the Declaration is a central pillar of our being and it charted a clear and new path for our members through the Maya Declaration, our members have clarity and pragmatic ways to champion and pursue financial inclusion, to effect policy changes, and to track progress. Every year, there are some member institutions that go the extra mile in their Maya commitments through progress on targets or making new commitments. The Maya Declaration Award recognizes that one outstanding member for progress and commitment to the Maya Declaration it is our honor to have Caroline Abel, Governor of the Central Bank of Seashells, to present this year's award.
ladies and gentlemen, here are the fin finalists for the Maya Declaration Commitments Award. Bangladesh Bank. Central Bank of Egypt. Reserve Bank of Fiji. Bank Al Maghrib. And Banco Central des Estas del Afriki, or BCEAO. Ladies and gentlemen, please, a big round of applause to our finalists for this category. Congratulations to all the finalists. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to announce that the winner of this year's Maya Declaration Award is the Central Bank of Egypt. Ladies and gentlemen, please, another big round of applause for the finalists and the winner of the Maya Declaration Commitments Award. Congratulations to all of you. We also thank the uh, Governor of the Central Bank of Seashells for doing the honors by presenting this award. Ladies and gentlemen, before we move on to the next category, just a quick reminder to everyone, there will be a separate Maya Declaration section after the coffee break at the end of this session, featuring members that have new commitments and reported progress on existing Maya targets. Ladies and gentlemen, our next category, we announce the winner of the FinTech Showcase 2022. Nobody involved in the furthering of financial inclusion can deny the enormous role that technology can and does play for underdeserved MSMEs and individuals. Annually, the AFI FinTech Showcase features world's most promising FinTech and RegTech innovators that are aiming to build a more financially inclusive world. Earlier this year, for 2022, 10 finalists from a long list of applicants were chosen to pitch their solutions. Today, we will be recognizing the winner, the second place finalist, or the second place winner, and third place winner from this year's AFI FinTech Showcase. We're honored to have Bayasai Khan Demberal Dash, the chairman of the Financial Regulatory Commission of Mongolia, to present the awards for the finalists and the winner. Ladies and gentlemen, the third place winner is Wizard Digital, a fintech that operates out of London and South Africa. With their proprietary methods, Wizard has come up with banking solutions that are cost-effective, simple, and secure, thereby tailoring itself to the needs of marginalized groups such as women and rural populations and underserved MSMEs. Please, a big round of applause for Wizard, ladies and gentlemen, the third place winner. A big round of applause, please. Congratulations, Wizard, our third place winner for this award. Our second place winner is Uncap. 
which seeks to encourage entrepreneurship in Africa by providing widely accessible data on those looking for early stage funding. Since 2019, UNCAP has invested in 27 companies across eight sectors. Let's give them a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Our second place winner is UNCAP. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the AFI Fintech Showcase 2022. They have simplified financial services for MSMEs. They have finally tailored their services to unlock the productivity of small businesses and boost their potential. They offer grants, credit, and capacity building, all to promote the wide use of good quality financial services for MSMEs in Africa. Please join me in congratulating Growth Platform. Congratulations. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the winners of the FinTech Showcase 2022. Third place winner, Wizard Digital. Second place winner, Uncap. And the winner for this category, congratulations, Growth Platform. Many thanks to all our wonderfully innovative finalists. And we also thank um, the chairman. Thank you so much, sir, for coming forward to present this award. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the new awards. We move on to two new high-level awards in the fields of youth and innovation. This is the Global Financial Youth Inclusion Award. Participants were invited to nominate themselves for each of these categories. The finalists were meticulously reviewed by our first ever jury panel, composed of renowned figures in the world of financial inclusion. The jury was also responsible for selecting the winner of each award. The first is the Global Financial Youth Inclusion Award. This is an award that recognizes financial policy makers and regulators that are undertaking impactful action to accelerate the financial inclusion of youth. It is open to AFI members and non-members. In many developing countries, youth are often the group that faces the lowest levels of financial inclusion. Education and a tough job market are barriers, no doubt. But even those who turn to self-employment are limited because of the lack of financing tools and opportunities to grow their businesses and incomes. As we know only too well, if the financial exclusion of youth becomes a chronic issue, the broader economy can be badly impacted. The Global Financial Youth Inclusion Award, therefore, is a reinforcement of AFI's commitment in the Kijali Statement to advancing the financial inclusion of youth by recognizing policymakers and regulators which take concrete measures to bring safe, sustainable, and relevant financial services to young people. AFI is honored to have Anita Angelovska Beovska, the um, Governor of the National Bank of the Republic of North Macedonia. The Governor comes forward to present the Global Financial Youth Inclusion Award. Ladies and gentlemen, overall, the jury was very impressed by the quality of submissions in this policy area, which is still emerging in the network. Here are the finalists. Bangladesh Bank's School Banking Initiative impressed the jury as it includes aspects of both financial education and the development of a financial savings product for children under 18 years of age. 
This combination of experiences is ideal for the financial inclusion of future young people. Ladies and gentlemen, Bangladesh Bank. Our second finalist, the Czech National Bank. Czech National Bank's comprehensive school education program was recognized for the strong and solid work with clear opportunity to imitate and learn from. Ladies and gentlemen, the Czech National Bank. Our third finalist, congratulations, Superintendencia de la Economia Popular e Solidaria de Ecuador. It also demonstrated strong commitment towards youth financial inclusion with a focus on financial education and collaborated with in Ecuador to support the adaptation of academic curricula to include topics related to financial education. Our fourth finalist, we congratulate Central Bank of Egypt. Their entry impressed the jury, ladies and gentlemen, for the leadership that CBE is demonstrating to drive youth financial inclusion by looking at combining both demand and supply side interventions. The results this is yielding were also demonstrated. And the final finalist, for this category, congratulations, Palestine Monetary Authority. They impressed the jury with how youth financial inclusion is embedded in their national financial inclusion strategy and the holistic approach that includes an extensive set of initiatives covering awareness raising activities, financial services, measuring and benchmarking initiatives. Very clear results have been captured and the reach by these programs is tremendous. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the first ever AFI Global Financial Youth Inclusion Award, congratulations, Palestine Monetary Authority. Ladies and gentlemen, another big congratulations, Palestine Monetary Authority, for pioneering this win. We congratulate the winner and also the finalists, and we thank sincerely the governor for presenting this newly launched award. Congratulations to all of you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the final award for the morning. This is the Nesta Espania Junior Financial Inclusion Innovation Award. It's my great privilege to introduce this prestigious award to you. One that is founded in the legacy and values of the governor Nesta Espania Junior of the Philippines. A founder member of AFI, Governor Espinilla, was also a tireless advocate of innovation and inclusion. Through this award, we honor Governor Espinilla's contributions to financial inclusion in his country and globally. We also hope that this award will, motiv will motivate policymakers and regulators in the AFI network and beyond to think boldly as he did and to vigorously explore technology and innovation so that we can progress in exclu inclusive, sustainable financial sectors. The award will be, 
excuse me, will be presented to a member that has championed innovation and use of technology to advance financial inclusion and demonstrated leadership in sharing its experiences with peers. This award was established together with Banco Centro Nang Filipinas BSPE with funding support from Flourish Ventures. Support from Flourish Ventures has enabled AFI to support the winner with a policy project worth 50,000 US dollars that aligns with the spirit and the theme of this innovation award. Before this award is presented, we'd like to play this tribute video in memory of Governor Nesta Espinilla Jr. Thank you. 